what's going on? Ryan here, setspacetriathlon.com. Just getting my settings all set up. We're doing a little Facebook Live real quick. I'm going to talk about Ironman 7.3 Michigan. Specifically, we're going to talk about the bike course. So I want to go over that. I said, uh, I'm coach, I'm not doing it myself. I have a few athletes doing it, and I've written some plans for it. So I like to review the courses and make sure I kind of know what the course looks like in order to develop the proper training plan. Because if you're got a hilly course and you're not training for hills or if you have flat course you're not training for flat courses your plan's not going to jive with race day and it's going to be a little bit uh defeating when you go out there and you just you're not prepared for the course so this is what i do normally just where i'm writing up plans or anything or if i'm just talking to athletes so i wanted to start doing them live so you people can soak it up and later on making new developing courses for each different event so my club members can be on the website and kind of everything's all housed together in a nice little format for them so they can all review this later. Um, and if you want to review it, you can start from the finish. I'll leave it up on Facebook and you guys can go watch it anytime you want. Also go back and post it on YouTube so you can watch it there too. So with that, let's dive right into it. So 70.3 Michigan, uh, September 12, 2021, Brainport, Michigan. Uh, right now, this is the current bike course on the map. As you look at it today, you go to uh, 70.3 Michigan website and here you go. This is it. You've got the fine Lake Michigan, which I was just in for USAT Nationals. Still got the wristbands. I need to cut those off. Keep forgetting about it. Um, the lake was great. Uh, the where we swam was awesome. I've gone over the swim for this little inlet. We had the protection, the barriers, uh, so we weren't really dealing with the current or anything like that. It was great. It was perfect. We're going to love the swim. But more specifically, let's talk about the bike course. So go ahead and click on the bike course, download it. And I like to download it so you can look at the second page. Um, and you can see the profile. So the first thing I kind of look at is what are we looking at? And we look at the website and it says the uh, bike is rolling. Um, so just whoever makes this, it, it kind of depends on what they think of it. So rolling could mean different things to different people. So I like to look at the profile. You know, the, the elevation, we'll go over how to kind of check that if you're from out of town or had ridden it or anything like that. You can go to map, you know, map my ride and all kinds of other stuff and just map it out if you want but there's kind of quicker easier tricks of the trade that i like to do so when you look at the elevation profile it looks like you got a nice little climb up front and then you go down it looks like kind of a turnaround you know that's your little first ride out here like you turn you come back down and the rest does not look too uh, crazy there's a little climb here and then a little climb here and back down and then a little climb and come back and transition so it's really it's I don't know if I call this rolling. Rolling to me is, is steadily, steadily rolling hills. This one right here is is not too bad. I mean, there's just some straight up climbs, and then the rest is, is pretty flat and pretty minimal. So, um, really, I wouldn't focus too much on, on working, you know, hill strength and that type of thing. Uh, but do be prepared just for some punchy little hills to ride them up real quick and, and carry your momentum to get over them. So, it looks pretty straightforward. You know, it's going to be one loop, so you're not going to worry about riding it in multiple times um, but you do have to worry about like i said coming out of transition you kind of do this little u-turn and you come back out and you ride the course do another u-turn so it's an out and back course which some people kind of get um a little bit i guess worn out with you know you kind of see the same thing going out and coming back but uh personally for me i i find it but at least you don't have to do multiple loops so if you don't like the course you only have to see it once they do have the turn by turn directions. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they go back and they make little tweaks to the bike course and they don't update the course, the center by turn. I wouldn't, it's not the end of the world. If you go out and you want to drive the course, just take the map with you and make sure you kind of know about where you're going. Um, just don't hang your hat on these turn by turn directions being the gospel or anything like that. Um, but like I said, you know, a gain of about 1200 feet over a 56 mile bike ride isn't too bad overall. So you don't really need to prepare for some mountainous climb out there in Michigan. Um, and like I said, I did USAT nationals out there in Milwaukee. And um, even though you're separated out by the lake, it's really, it's not hilly. There's some kind of false flats and some slow meandering climbs. So really it's not like hill country out there necessarily. So here's where I like to dive in. You know, if you look at the race, you look at the average temperature, we'll go over the weather, but average air temperature is about 67 degrees. So um, I, when I was up there in, in August, it, it was warm and humid. So you just got to be prepared. It might be a little humid up there. It could be cool. So you might want to bring some uh, cool weather gear, especially when you first got on the bike. So maybe um, some tube socks and cut cut the ends out and use those arm warmers while you're getting warm off the bike. Uh, you just got to be careful. Um, and I think I hit that... <laughs> 
Yeah, I kind of like to get, let's rewind that, go back to the start. For whatever reason, I was looking up here and it's a Red Bull team, and I thought that was a transition symbol. Transitions down here because that makes more sense because there's nowhere to swim up here. So let's rewind that. So coming out of transition, you still do that U turn and you come back and then you do the rest of the climb U turn and then come back. So at least you're kind of going south. So it always feels like you're going downhill and going south, right? Anyway, so yeah, rewind that. Forget about the first part I said and let's go forward. So what I like to do is um, after I'm done with this, and like I said, it it's, might be a little bit cool. So just bring some warm weather gear that if you get cold on the bike. Um, maybe like a little wind vest or, you know, some, find some cheap that maybe you can get rid of at a bike aid station later on the bike course and start warming up. Uh, you know, tube socks from arm warmers so you can throw those away in an aid station or something like that. So just be ready. It could be a little cool uh, when you got to, out there on the bike. But, uh, you know, sunscreen, if it's going to be sunny, it can still be sunny and still get sunburned. So make sure you got that covered. Um, but really, hopefully heat is not going to be a problem for you on this bike ride. It's just going to be making sure you got all your gear. Make sure your bike's tuned up and have an aero bike. Don't, you know, if, if there's a question out there of do I need a road bike or an aero bike, you got both. Bring an aero bike because you're going to spend plenty of time in the aero position. Um, it's really not too technical. You know, it's a few sharp turns on there, but the most of it is meandering except for U-turns. So really bring the aero bike, be in that aero position, train in that aero position when you're out doing your ride. So make sure you got that. So this is where we jump into getting ready for the bike course and doing your workouts and rides, especially if you don't live in the area like me, I'm in Kansas and I went to do this race, you know, for me to drive up there and, and ride the course or something like that, it's kind of, it's a, you know, close to 10, 11, 12 hour drive or something like that. So for me, I'm not going to go up there, but if I want to ride it and experience kind of what's going to be like at home, I've got Ruby AR. So if I go to my ruby.com profile and I search up, I go to explore virtual routes. I do a search, Central Point View, Michigan, two pop up. Uh, Michigan Titanium, and I've already looked at that. That is not the right course for Michigan Ironman 70.3. Look at that. Look at the map. Looks pretty good. So somebody has either mapped it out or gone and write it and made a GPX file. So you could export this file and write it with your Garmin devices, or you can, if you've got Ruby AR, you just go to this, go add to my favorites. And then it will show up on your favorites list when you go to Ruby AR and run your trainer with that. So that's important because notice the, the total elevation gain is 1456. So if you look at the course map, 1158. So the 300 feet of difference, uh, I would tend to kind of go with the, the Ruby files um, just because sometimes the, the Ironman maps and stuff are just kind of off and after the race, people kind of notice that. The other flip side is you can also go out and check it out on Garmin Connect. You can go in here with your account. Uh, I did Frankfurt, Michigan, uh, course type. I did road cycling distance, you know, cut off the 60 miles, elevation, and activity. So when you do that and you hit search, you come up with a couple different options. So let's hit this one. Ironman 70.3 Michigan bike course. So if you look at the route, it looks pretty similar to our map. So more than likely, this was developed by someone out riding the course. So this is kind of nice because if you look at the profile, it kind of looks like what, doesn't look like they did it in the right order maybe. Maybe they started, oh, looks like they started in transition. So it looks a little backwards from the elevation profile up here, but I would tend to believe this because the start looks here and it looks like it's accurate. Uh, 1,200 feet of gain, so that looks pretty fat, pretty accurate. So you can hit the click or hit the button here, and you can duplicate it and copy it in your Garmin. So then you can run your trainer with a Garmin file. So if you don't have a platform like Ruby or you don't have Zwift or anything else to run your trainer and use your Garmin, you can save this course. I've done plenty of videos on that. If you want, if you have questions about it, uh, dig through my YouTube or you can message me. I can send you in the direction. Get the map, duplicate it. Copy it in as a workout, send it to your device, and have it control your trainer, and it will run you through the gradients of the course so you can see what it feels like. Uh, personally, like I said, I got in when Ruby AR did the uh, launch, and you can buy your subscription up front and a severe discount. So I've got that reoccurring. So I just go through, save it to my favorites, and then go right in on my trainer. Uh, so I've, I've done this with all the courses that I've reviewed, even if I don't ride them like Oregon. Michigan, Boulder, all these other courses, I've gone through and I've saved them. They're in my favorites, so I can ride them anytime. 
But I also like doing this because then you can verify, you know, this is about 1,500 feet of gain. This is about 1,200 feet of gain. But this one says 1,158. So, you know, when you go to their maps and then you go to the real world situation, I tend to believe these a little bit more. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if you ride 300 feet of extra elevation gain on your Groovy, uh, on your Smart Trainer, um, it's not going to be the end of the world. So I think that's going to be the key. So this hopefully gives you a little bit of an idea of where to start off when you're, you're training through your bike and what to get ready for. Um, really, you know, when I was out there for U.S. Safety Nationals, it wasn't super windy. Um, you know, if you go to the, I'll, I'll do a, a little weather report, but, you know, make sure that you, aero bike, if you got it, make sure you can be able to stay in that air position for 56 miles because it is really going to pay off. Um, especially if it does get a little bit windy, USCT Nationals in Milwaukee, there was a little breeze coming off Lake Michigan and we had a, wet, a little headwind and it was, it was a little bit um, surprising and, and just kind of stuck in. It was very subtle that you ride along and got this just a little bit of headwind. And when you turn, you really felt it. You're like, Oh, now I can really crank on the pedals to get some speed out. But you know, you're flat, you got that just a little bit of 10 to 12, 15 mile per hour headwind. It's not a gust, you don't really feel it, but it's really kind of bogging you down a little bit. So just make sure that you are comfortable riding in your position because I think this course, you know, especially this elevation profile, whatever platform you want to look at, I think it's the majority of the time you're going to spend your time in your position. So I think you need to be comfortable with that. Um, other than that, it, it's really, I think, pretty straightforward. Like I said, it's you start a transition, you come back to a U-turn and do the course, it's really you know, ride by transition again. So it's really not complicated. It's one loop. It's not super crazy. And with that, I want to kind of wrap it up because, you know, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. So if you uh, like this video here on uh, Facebook, put a message on it. Um, and if you, if it helped you out in any way, shape, or form, if you have any questions, put them in the comments on YouTube, put them in the comments on Facebook, and hopefully this helps you out and gets you ready for race day. So with that, I want to wrap it up. Happy training. Good luck on race day. We'll see you out there.